Welcome to Moose Plays everyone, I'm the Liquor Moose and today we will be going over my week 2 team builder for the 10th season of the UPA. For this week we will be going up against Jacko, coach of the Sutopolis Swampards. And yeah, so Jacko is actually in our division, so uh, this is a direct playoff battle, a uh, direct playoff spot battle, uh, my apologies. Um, which unfortunately Jacko also did win last week along with us, so uh, we definitely are looking for a win this week because... Um, just being able to leg up ahead uh, in that sort of format to get uh, the, the division playoff spot is definitely the one you want the most. Um, but uh, honestly, on top of that, Jacko is just an amazing battler. Definitely one of the more well-known players in the community, and definitely one of the better players in the community. So we definitely have our work cut out for us this week in terms of uh, competition levels. So with that in mind, let's just take a look at Jacko's team that he drafted. So. He drafted Celestila, Mega Metacham, Weavile, Shaman, Toxapex, Swampert, Gengar, Mesprit, Flygon, Stunfisk, Kangaskhan, and Manectric, with his Z-move users being Celestila and Gengar. So, uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, there's a lot of threats. I, I don't really know if I can pinpoint like the quote-unquote biggest threat on Jacko's team because, <laughs> believe it or not, I actually have really good responses for a lot of Jacko's really, really big threats. The Celesteela, Rotom Heat is probably like the best switch in you could ask for to a Celesteela. Uh, Mega Metacham, Mew is probably the best switch into that. Weavile, Mega Scizor is probably the best switch into that. Uh, and then on top of that, you do have uh, Gengar, which can always pose an issue, but Crocodile is a pretty good, um, a pretty good, like, check to Gengar, I guess. Uh, the rest of his stuff can prove to be, like, a little slightly annoying, like, uh, Shaman, Shaman could potentially be a problem, but I mean, I also have, again, the Mega Scizor and the Crobat, and then, like, a few other things that, like, I'm not really too sure Shaman shows up. Toxapex can kind of be annoying, um, just defensively to deal with, so I do have to find a way to, uh, deal with that. Uh, I'm sure Swampert has a pretty decent matchup, um, besides the Whimsicott that's on the bench <laughs> this week. Uh, but yeah, like, there, there's a lot of things that, like, I'm not really too sure what Jacko brings. The problem is, uh, my team building this, this week seemed, like, pretty straightforward. Like, almost one-for-one, one, tr not trade-offs, but, like, one-for-one one switch-ins. Like, like I said, like, Rotom Heat's probably the best Celesteela answer you could ask for. Um... Mew's probably the best Mega Metachamps uh, answer you could ask for, and Mega Scissor's probably the best Weavile answer you could ask for. And, like, I'm sure Jacko realizes this, and th the thing is, like, yes, it might put pressure on Jacko for his team building, but at the same time, it might force Jacko to approach the matchup in a different way and could potentially just, like, completely render my... Not my team building useless, but like it could just there's more odds that I might miss something in this case So I'm really hoping that doesn't happen, but if it does I'm gonna have to respond to it in the game, which I think I am I, I kind of put my strength to that better is the way I how I respond to things in the game But anyways, that's enough about that. Let's just go over the team that I decided to build so once again We do have our Rotom Heat here making his debut this season uh, like I said, probably the best Celesteela answer you could ask for. Probably the best thing that Celesteela could do to this um, is either Leech Seed this to gain some health back and switch out, or potentially um, or potentially Metal Sound Celesteelas. The only thing is, um, since I am like very, very much like specially defensive investment, he's gonna have to go for two Metal Sounds in order for um, in order for his attacks to start doing stuff. Since I do four times resist Steel and I do resist Flying as well. Uh, overheat with this special attack investment guarantees that I can, um, uh, oh my goodness, guarantees that I can outspeed, um, not outspeed, I'm an idiot. It guarantees that I can, uh, two hit KO after leftovers, a max specially defensive Celesteela with overheat. Uh, obviously that, that thing is too fucking fat to get O-Code by Overheat, uh, if I wasn't Specs. Um, but barring that, Volt Switch, obvious momentum stuff, Hidden Power Grass for Swampert, since that is, like, more than likely his switch into this, but he does have a couple other likely switches to this in his, uh, in his, uh, oh my goodness, in his other ground types like Flygon and Stunfisk, uh, and to an extent Manectric, but even though, uh, Manectric really gets bought by Overheat, um, so we do have Toxic to wear down, like, more specifically his ground types. Um, 
I guess more so the stun fix than the Flygon, because I, I guess kind of the Flygon. I don't really touch the Flygon all that well with this set. But with this special defense investment, we are able to pivot into stun fix and Manectric relatively easily as well, should we need to do that. The speed, I believe, is here to outpace a no speed Kangaskhan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I was I was definitely sure I wanted a bulky um, a bulky Rotom Heat this time around, so um, we did end up just creeping a little bit with a uh, with the Kangaskhan. I'm not too sure if it shows up, but it's just a benchmark to hit that would be nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not too much to say about this Rotom Heat. In my opinion, it's relatively straightforward. Next up, we do have uh, Bruce, our Crobat, making a <laughs> making his debut. And Crobat offensively, like actually, like this stall breaking Crobat looks really nice against Jacko's team. Obviously, Celesteela can switch into Crobat relatively easily, but I do have the oh, excuse me, I do have the Super Fang for that. And then. Um, Oh my goodness! Uh, physically defensive Tox Effects, which I think is a is sort of a likely bring uh, on Jacko's part. Uh, doesn't really take like obviously it can switch into Brave Birds relatively well, but it doesn't really like dealing with uh, Taunt Super Fang. Uh, and then as well, just being able to naturally outspeed both the Weavile and the Mega Metacham and fire off Brave Birds is going to be very uh, very good in the late game, where his Weavile is either worn down or actually our Brave Bird can Oko a Mega Metacham or at least the Mega Metacham I expect him to bring, which would be for him. Uh, speed creeping my Kyurem, and then uh, just putting the rest into HP, we are able to guarantee Oko uh, with Brave Bird with this 20 attack investment. Other than that, speed for the Weavile, um, max HP just for being generally bulky, and then the rest just thrown into <laughs> physical defense, because why not? Uh, this can pivot into Seed Flares relatively easily from Shaman. Not necessarily Psychics, but again, I'm not really too sure if Shaman even shows up, because mostly because of Rotom Heat, since uh, Shaman doesn't really have a great way to touch Rotom Heat. Uh, considering that like this does resist seed flare even though like he could get the drops which is really unfortunate but I do but Rotom also is immune to earth power and uh, resists both air slash and dazzling gleam uh, so really the only way he would be able to hit this is like hidden power rock or hidden power water so I guess maybe hidden power rock uh, if he's feeling frisky to try to hit this and the crowbat I'm not too sure whether the shaman shows up because again I do also have my mega scissor which like I've mentioned is my best weavile switch in and probably the best weavile switch in, in the game you could ask for um, and yeah, we have a we have a pretty funky spread here. So uh, let me explain. The speed first off is for um, uh, this is for no speed Mesprit in case that shows up. Um, and then we have uh, like I mean the moves are pretty obvious. I want to defog here as my last move because um, uh, in the case where like Rotom is actually going to be a very good pivot in this match. Again, I do just kind of want like I just want rocks off the field because I don't want Rotom taking 25% on every entry. Uh, so defog, in my opinion, Scizor was the best defogger in this match since, like, it, like Scizor is like the dedicated Weavile switch in, and it cannot be too KO'd even by Bandit Weavile. So, uh, just having defog on there is definitely, um, is definitely like the best option in my in my opinion for this match. Again, and the rest of the moves are pretty obvious. Max HP is obvious. Uh, with this attack investment, we are guaranteed to uh, Oko the Weavile I expect him to bring, which once again is like, uh, what's he speed creeping? My Whimsicott, and then putting the rest into HP. So with 52 uh, and then Adamant Nature, uh, we are able to Oko with Bullet Punch. Uh, we have this amount of special defense investment. It's, it's a little situational. I don't really know if this will actually happen, but uh, we can guarantee live a no special attack invested flamethrower from Celesteela after rocks uh so i mean that's a thing and then the rest was put into just uh into just physical defense to be able to switch into weavile more properly so again pretty straightforward mega scissor even though the spread looks funky but uh in my opinion definitely the best one for the match i think i think this is gonna have like i think this is gonna pull a lot of weight in this matchup uh next up we do have our crocodile which is uh it, it basically has to be my gengar um <laughs> it basically has to be my gengar revenger um Hopefully he's not, I guess maybe if he is Scarf Gengar it's a little bit better because then he loses a lot of power and I do have specially defensive uh, Rotom for that, but uh, in the case where he specs he can deal a lot of damage. The only thing that really uh, Gengar can do super effectively to um, Crocodile is, uh, oh my god, is Focus Blast which is why we have the Chopple Berry. Uh, I guess he could have Icy Wind which might be a problem, but if he's Icy Wind he's definitely, like I don't think he'd be non-Life Orb, like I don't think he'd be Choice basically. Um, if he's um, if he's choice, he probably won't have icy wind because that's just not the greatest move to be locked into. Um, but yeah, earthquake was pretty obvious. This can obviously Oko 
um, Gengar, as well as this uh, Earthquake with this much investment guarantee uh, to KO's physically defensive tox effects after Black Sludge recovery, which is nice, and then it also guarantee uh, to KO's physically defensive Stun Fisk after leftovers. Uh, knock off, because it's one of the best moves in the game. Uh, Crocodile is going to be our rocker for the match, and then uh, we do have Pursuit here because I thought about running SmackDown uh, in case he wanted, in case Jacko wanted to switch and sell a Steela onto this, and then I can. Uh, after the SmackDown, I can bop it with an Earthquake, but if I don't have Pursuit, his Gengar could potentially be a little bit of trouble. So I do want to try to Pursuit Trap that. Um, and then in the case where um, he stays in and goes for Focus Blast, he either ha he either has to one uh, if he if he's locked if he's locked into Focus Blast. Actually, even if he isn't locked into Focus Blast, um, I'm pretty sure if he's not um, if he's not. Maybe if he's Life Orb, he could. I don't remember the calcs. Um, if he's Specs, he would have to hit two Focus Blasts, which then you're... I mean, it's Focus It's focus Miss. <laughs> um, if he's Life Orb, I still don't think, like, Focus Blast into either Shadow Ball or Sludge Wave can kill, and then it's kind of the same thing. And it's definitely not the case if he's not boosting item. Um, so I'm basically just here clicking Pursuit on <laughs> his um, on his Gengar with this, because it's definitely the best thing I have for it. Uh, yeah, uh, again, there's not really too much to say. Speed is here. Oh, right, this speed, uh, it's a little aggressive. Uh, I don't, I didn't really think that if he did bring Kangaskhan that, uh, if he did bring Kangaskhan, I didn't really think it'd be max speed because then I'm not putting too much, like, I'm putting, like, very, very little into my bulk. Uh, so we're actually just creeping anything that wants to try to speed creep my Rotom Heat. So max speed Rotom hits 298, uh, so creeping that would be 299, and then I obviously hit 300 to creep those. Next up, another set that doesn't really require too much explanation because, once again, Mew is like the best Mega Metachamp switching you could ever ask for in the game. So, uh, we have enough speed here to outspeed Max Speed Mega Kangaskhan just to be safe and we can U-turn on that. And then just put the rest into physical defense to be able to basically not get too hit KO'd by anything unboosted Mega Metachamp wants to throw at us because... Mew is just way too <laughs> fat. Uh, and then we have Softwell for recovery, which is obvious. will o -Wisp to be able to burn, hopefully burn the Mega Metachamp. Hopefully he doesn't have sub. Uh, but even then, being able to burn something else on the switch in. Like, if he switches in Celesteel or Weave on this, burning those would be, would just be fantastic. Um, and then anything else is just, like, basically chip that I could, or, like, even just preventing leftovers. That would be very nice. Uh, Psychic is here to be able to... Uh, just kind of dent anything we need to be able to dent. Um, and then U-Turn is here just to be able to try to momentum out. If he tries to switch uh, his Mega Metacham out, I can easily U-Turn on that. Uh, and then, yeah. Again, not too much to say about this Mew. It's a very straightforward set, but for a very good reason. And finally, uh, I was on the fence on what to bring for the last Mon, but after some consulting with some people, Parish, Song, uh, Parish Trap Azu is definitely the way to go because otherwise Tox Effects does look to be a pain. I would have to basically rely on Crocodile to do it because um, because none of my other Pokemon can really, uh, other than maybe like Stallbreak and Crobat, I think could uh, would be able to do it. Um, but yeah, like a Parish Trap Azumarill is definitely the play because like obviously if he thinks this is offensive, he's going to switch in his. Um, Oh my god, he's gonna switch in his Tox Specs. That's pretty much a no-brainer. So being able to Whirlpool it and then Perish, uh, Perish Song it to death will be uh, very great for the rest of my team to not to basically not have to deal with that piece of shit. Um, there is a chance that Jacko could um, predict this and go for Shed Shell on his... Um, uh, oh my goodness, on his Tox Specs. But there's really no way to... There's really no way to figure that out until, like, the battle, because, like, if I see Black Sludge, then it's very clear that this was meant to be his switch in, and I can Parish Song it, but if he, if, if Black Sludge doesn't activate, he could be Shed Shell, but at the same time, he could very well have just been Rocky Helmet, uh, to not only be able to switch into this, but to be able to pivot into stuff like my Mega Scizor, so I'm not really too sure how that's gonna go, but, uh, either way, I'm perfectly fine with, um, with this set, as it's just... It's just really good in the situation with uh, with max HP and then the foreign defense. We can, we are guaranteed not to get KO'd by anything. Um, uh, oh my goodness, that adamant uh, adamant Flygon was thrown at us because at this point I didn't really have like a fantastic switch into it. Even though this like <laughs> I mean the zoom roll makes it so he can't spam outrage, which is good. Um, and then uh, Parish Song Protect is obvious, and then Toxic, because I, I had Scald here originally, but in the case where he does have, like, a setup threat that is trying to set up in front of Azu, um, 
just getting it on a timer with Toxic seemed a little more reliable than trying to Scald Burn it was. Especially if he was like some sort of special setup, like if he's Calm Mind Mesprit, I guess, uh, would be a good example. Uh, so Toxic would be able to wear that down nice and easy. So, uh, yeah, not too much to say. Oh, I think the speed. Uh, the speed is here for, I believe, a no-speed Celesteela was the marker. Yeah, because I wanted to outspeed a no-speed Swampert, but Celesteela only outspeeds that by one point. So, uh, we're, we're creeping no-speed Celesteela here uh, to be able to... J just in case, I don't know if you'd bring no speed Celesteela, but it's just a benchmark to hit. Uh, but yeah, so that is the team. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the team in the comment section down below. Tell me how you think we're going to do. I am really excited to play against Jacko. Not only a fantastic battler, but also a uh, an important game too, since this is an in division game. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this match. So uh, keep your guys' eyes out on the channel tomorrow for when the battle versus Jacko goes live. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.